welcome to wet luminous today we are performing a surgery for the correction of patellar laxation so before going for the correction of patellar laxation i just wanted to give you a brief introduction regarding what is patella how it laxates and what are the various reasons behind it so i have made a small presentation through which i'll be explain you the different anatomy of the patella its stifle joint and what causes the patellar laxation what are the different grades of patellar laxation coming for the presentation patellar laxation before knowing what is patellar laxation we have to understand the anatomy of the stifle joint stifle joint is a joint where which you can see three joint structure that is femur and tibia articulation femur patellar articulation and patella tibia articulation so where which you can see this is the distal extremity of the femur bone this is the quadricep muscle this quadricep muscle tendon has got a small sesamoid bone called as patella which is located on the trochlea of the femur and we have a tibia over here in which this tendon get insert to the anterior tibial tuberosity of the tibia so this is the whole structure where you have femur tibia quadricep tendon and the patella so this is a unique joint formed by three different bones that is patella femur and tibia so coming for what causes this patellar laxation this patellar laxation may be genetic may be acquired also so based on that we have classified into three major reasons why the patellar laxation happens one is a quadricep muscle contracture whenever there is a contracture of this particular quadricep muscle there is a pull over the patella leading to medial or lateral laxation of the patella second one is the deviation of the femur bone the femur bone suppose assume this is the fist of mine is a femur bone and this is a tibia they are located like this if there is any deviation from the normal angulation when the deviation happens the tendon which is attached to the tibial tuberosity laxates hence we can notice a laxation over there also and similarly as the femur is deviating there are chances even the tibia may deviate based on the degree or based on the condition how much ever the laxation is happening and understanding the anatomical structure where in which it is causing the laxation is very important for the diagnosis and also to plan for the surgery so coming for the grades of laxation we have four major grades so as you can notice they are graded as grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 and grade 4 so what is grade 1 grade 1 is the one when we manually try to push the patella the patella laxates from the trochlea but once we remove the pressure from that area the patella comes and sits back into its own trochlea in the grade 2 what happens when you push it it goes outside with the flexion of the limb the patella comes back to the normal trochlea so in grade 3 what happens when you put a lateral pressure on the patella the patella laxates and even the flexion of the leg the uh, patella doesn't comes and sits back to the trochlea this is termed as grade 3 laxation in grade 4 laxation there is a formation of pseudo groove or a new groove is been formed where the patella never comes back to the own position it permanently positions itself into the outside understanding the degree is very 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 important based on the degree based on the condition either it might be muscular contracture or the femur deviation or the tibial deviation we have to plan for the surgery so how to diagnose it clinically so animal will be having will be lifting its leg and walking it's not be walking properly there will be a limp will be there orthopedic examination as i said we diagnose through manual putting a pressure on the patella and we classify them into grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 so third one is a radiographic position or radiographic how to demarcate it so there are two various kinds of views one to take a lateral view and the other one is to see for the skyline radiograph this is how the skyline radiograph is been taken where you flex the limb and we position the x ray beam to fall over the patella and check for the positions so coming for the treatment aspect we have different various 
way of treatment for a basic grade 1 fertilization retinacular imprecation is a technique where we put a, a simple interrupted sutures on the opposite side of the laxation. Suppose if the patella is been laxated on the medial side, we reposition back into the trochlea and we put a stay sutures kind of a thing on the lateral aspect. So whenever there is a pull by this particular retinaculum, the retinaculum holds back the patella back into position. Second, we have trochlear wet sulcoplasty. This is done when there is a deviation of the femur or there is a shallow trochlea. Trochlea is like a pulley like structure where which the patella sits over there. Whenever this is not deep enough, hence there will be a laxation happening. That time we deepen the groove by using a, a surgery called as trochlea wedge sulcoplasty, where we do cut open, uh, make, where we do a wedge sulcoplasty and we reposition the patella back into position by deepening the groove. And third one is tibial tibiosity transposition. When you feel there is a deviation of the tibia, then we reposition the tibial tibiosity. We resect the tibial tibiosity, position back into the same normal angulations and we put a stay uh, lag screw in that position. This is how tibial tibiosity transposition has been performed. So there is one more treatment, newer version of treatment has come up. Instead of whenever there is a uh, shallow trochlea, we use trochlea ridge elevation. Instead of deepening the groove, we elevate the ridges. This is one new technique when which we place a, a synthetic material and we place three screws over there. Hence, this is been deepened so the patella never luxates. These are the various treatment protocols employed for this particular technique. So today we have a grade 1 lameness. So we are performing retinacular imbrication technique for this cat. So, I will be taking you to the operation theater and I will be showing you the surgery. Thank you. So, now I will be showing you how to take an skyline radiograph for patellar relaxation. So, I will be questioning the animal and I will be taking an x-ray. Then I will be showing you regarding the trochlear anatomy and the position of the patella in this particular case. This patient is sedated and we will be positioning in the VD position of the cat and we will be flexing the stifle joint and we will be putting a collimation from the top. Okay. So this is how we take an x-ray to exhibit the trochlea. So from here you can clearly examine the trochlea very properly under the flexed position. Okay. This is the way how you take both the hind limbs back and the cat is placed in the ventral dorsal position like this and the collimation is been placed right over the trochlea. Okay. This particular case is a second grade patellar laxation where which this is the patella. What are noticing here? This is the patella and here is the trochlea. So when I just try to push it with my hand, it is going back into the trochlea and the uh, movement, the flexing and the extension of the stifle joint is proper now. So if I just with a little pressure, again it is getting laxated. So you can see here, this is laxating and this is going back in the own position. So once it gets laxated, there is difficulty in extension and flexion of the stifle joint. So we are going to perform the surgery to fix this condition properly. So this is uh, laxated, this comes back to normal position. This is the normal where it again gets laxated like this. So this is the patella and here is the normal structure. Okay. This is the patella, so when I do it, it gets normal. So when I extend this, it is coming out, when I am flexing it, it is coming outside. When I am extending, it is going back in the normal position. So we will be doing the surgery to fix this condition. While flexing, it is coming out, that is getting laxated. While extending, it is going back in the normal position. So I will be placing a parapatellar incision in a semi-flexed stifle joint. So I will be incising the skin. Okay. So this is how I will approach the trochlea. Now the laxated patella, I will be bringing it back into position. So once I bring the patella back into position, we have an anatomical structure called as 
retinaculum. So this is the retinaculum which is present on both the sides that is on the either sides of the patellar straight ligament. So what I will be doing now is I will be putting a simple interrupted sutures on the retinaculum that is what I will be imbricating this particular retinaculum as on the lateral side. So this will inhibit the patella to laxate towards the medial side. So I will be putting a sutures, continuous sutures around 8 to 9 sutures I will be putting on the lateral aspect of the patella so that the laxation of the patella towards the medial will be inhibited. So this is a technique, a primary technique to perform the patellar laxation of grade 2 surgery. As you can notice here, I have placed the patella back into the trochlear groove. It is in the position now and I have imbricated the lateral retinaculum with putting the interrupted sutures on the lateral side because the laxation of the patella was on the medial side. So I had to put a suture or a stay suture or imbrication technique on the lateral aspect of the patella. So by doing this, when I am giving a flexion or extension of the limb, there is no laxation of the patella. Patella is well within the trochlear groove. So even when I am trying to push it manually, it is not getting laxated either medially or laterally. It means the patella has been positioned back into the normal trochlear groove. So this is how we do the imbrication technique. Okay. So next step is to oppose the subcutaneous tissue and close the skin. After doing this, so this limb will be immobilized using a sling technique so that the limb will be immobilized for a period of 5 days, later leash walking and uh, cage rest for minimum for 15 days are to be provided for this cat. Okay. The subcutaneous tissue are been opposed. Now I will be opposing the skin using a non-absorbent suture material. This is the skin I have been opposed now. 